Enter a world of glamour and drama where laughter mixes with tears and surprises lurk around every corner. In this timeless movie, a talented cast brings unforgettable moments to life. But what really makes it special are the scenes that stay with you long after the movie ends. Have you ever had a scene from a film stick in your mind? Maybe it's the clever lines or the charm of your favorite actor. Share your own stories and memories with us. Keep watching for more insights and surprises. In 1956, a film graced the silver screen, captivating audiences with its charm and sophistication. Set amidst the glitz and glamour of the upper class, it took viewers on a whirlwind journey through love, music, and societal intrigue. With a stellar cast and timeless soundtrack, it quickly became a classic, epitomizing the elegance and allure of 1950s cinema. Its significance lies not only in its entertainment value, but also in its reflection of the cultural spirit of the time, offering a window into the aspirations and values of post-war America. As the credits roll, the movie leaves a lasting impression on the hearts of all who experience its magic, reminding us that love and laughter are treasures treasured by all. In casting, Elizabeth Taylor was the initial choice for Samantha Lord, but due to her unavailability, the role went to Grace Kelly. Helen Rose, responsible for costume design, notably crafted Grace Kelly's wedding gown for her marriage to Prince Rainier. The film featured a notable age range among its leads Grace Kelly was 26, while Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby were 40 and 53, respectively. Grace Kelly, recently engaged to Prince Rainier of Monaco, wore her actual engagement ring for her character's engagement ring in her last feature film before retiring from acting. The ring, a 10.5 carat emerald cut diamond flanked by two baguettes, added a touch of authenticity to her role. Set against the backdrop of the early days of the Newport Jazz Festival, the film captures the festival's challenges and eventual rise to prominence. The festival faced issues like venue damage, accommodation shortages, and traffic gridlock in its early years, but overcame them to become an iconic part of American music culture. In a classic movie from 1956, there's a small but noticeable change right at the start. Instead of the usual roaring lion, the opening credits feature a different kind of cat. As the story goes on, it marks the final time we see actress Florence Wicks on the big screen. Her role in this film is a special moment in her long career. Throughout the movie, there's something interesting you might spot. Keep an eye out for a blackened nail on one of the actor's fingers. It seems to be from an injury while filming, adding a realistic touch to his character. All these little details from the different cat in the credits to Florence Wicks's farewell performance and the actor's injured finger add depth to the movie, making it even more captivating. In the late 1990s, a staged version of a classic film took New York City by storm. It ran for a decent stretch, pleasing audiences with its musical adaptation. In Italy, Grace Kelly's movies got a special treatment with different actresses lending their voices for her characters. The film's ensemble is quite remarkable, featuring four Academy Award winners and one nominee. It's fascinating how a single movie can bring together such talent. In an unusual turn of events, a Bowery Boys comedy released in 1955 was mistakenly nominated for an Academy Award for Best Writing Original Story in 1957. The mix-up occurred because the Academy confused it with this film, which was still in wide release when the nominations were announced. Edward Burns and Elwood Ullman, the screenwriters of the Bowery Boys film, gracefully declined the nomination upon discovery of the mistake. To remedy a notable absence, the song Well, Did You Have a? from a previous Cole Porter musical was hastily added at the last minute. The inclusion was prompted by the realization that there wasn't a suitable song for Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra to perform together. Despite initial intentions to dub her voice, Grace Kelly sang her own part in True Love, which went on to achieve gold record status. Included among the American Film Institute's list of 400 movies nominated for the top 100 America's greatest music in the movies for the song True Love. The house used for the exterior of Dexter's mansion was later bought by Sonny Von Bulow and her husband Klaus. It was here she fell into the coma from which she has never recovered. This film featured Grace Kelly's final role before she became Princess of Monaco. It was released three months after her marriage to Prince Rainier Roman III. In the mid-1950s, a captivating movie emerged, drawing inspiration from a well-known play and film from the 1940s. It featured a star-studded cast, including Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby, who had previously worked together in another film portraying the challenges faced by an actor struggling with alcoholism. 
In this new film, their characters' lives intertwine as a director, played by William Holden, enters the picture and becomes smitten with Crosby's spouse, leading to an intriguing series of events. Adding to the intrigue, the movie showcases a rare car believed to belong to Frank Sinatra, making a brief but notable appearance. This car, delivered to Sinatra in late 1955, is spotted in a scene where Louis Cowern steps out of it, greeted by Grace Kelly. These connections, both on and off screen, enrich the film, providing depth to the relationships portrayed. Released in July 1956, this movie stands as a unique piece of cinematic history, blending the talents of its cast with the era's distinctive automobiles. Grace Kelly, starring in the film, went on to become the grandmother of Andrea Charlotte and Pierre Casaragi, her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra of Hanover, Louis and Paul and Decrut, Camille Gottlieb, Jasmine Grace Grimaldi, and Alexander Cost. In a notable scene, Dexter, portrayed by Bing Crosby, is seen reading touring topics, the Automobile Club's member magazine before it transitioned into Westways in 1934. Tracy's mother mentions that Dexter and Tracy, played by Grace Kelly, grew up together, although Bing Crosby is 26 years older than Grace. This reference likely implies their lack of maturity entering their first marriage together. Amidst the vibrant atmosphere of Newport, Rhode Island, a classic story takes on a new flavor. Instead of its usual Philadelphia backdrop, the tale now unfolds against the backdrop of Newport's lively jazz festival. One catchy tune from the movie, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, not only fits the storyline, but also inspired a popular TV quiz show later on. Another memorable song, True Love, penned by Cole Porter specifically for the film, became a huge hit. Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby's rendition of this song earned them platinum records with a special distinction. It was the only platinum record ever given to royalty back when Grace Kelly was a princess. In summary, High Society blends the charm of Newport, a catchy quiz show theme, and a chart-topping ballad, making it a movie with a lasting impact on culture. In High Society, Grace Kelly, though the central character, does not sing a solo. She only accompanies Bing Crosby on True Love and drunkenly shouts sensational. This departure from the typical musical format is notable. The film's average shot length is 14 seconds, contributing to its pacing and visual style. Louis Callern, a cast member, passed away in Japan shortly after filming. He was slated to appear in the Tea House of the August Moon, but died early in production, leading to his role being recast, making High Society his final screen appearance. In the pursuit of a musical collaboration, two legendary singers teamed up for a film in 1956. The desire to share a duet led them to join the cast of a production where they could harmonize together on screen. As the story unfolds, a bus approaches a grand mansion in Los Angeles. Interestingly, this mansion underwent a transformation through matte painting, adding an extra floor seamlessly. It's intriguing to note that this mansion later became famous as the Clampett's residence in a popular sitcom from the 1960s. There's a noticeable age gap between the actors in this film and their counterparts in a movie from 1940. The actors taking on the roles of Dexter and Mike were notably older than the actors who originally portrayed these characters. However, one exception was Grace Kelly, who played Tracy, and was younger than the actress who portrayed the character in 1940. This film not only brought together legendary voices, but also presented a shift in character ages, adding a unique flavor to the narrative.